Welcome to the mother Relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. Reflections. Reflecting on the previous year and what would be better for the new one. Yeah, the new year in the sport of boxing. What? In the previous year, we saw a good number of the PBC's fighters going to what were major fights, Big ones. major bouts, coming off of lengthy stints of inactivity. And I've talked about this many, many times, not just in the previous year, but previous years. Yes. We saw Errol Spence go into the Crawford fight, Stephen Fulton go into the Inui fight, Deontay Wilder go into the Joseph Parker fight, coming off a year or more of inactivity. And inactivity, it really doesn't help a fighter in any capacity. It really doesn't help that the night of a major fight, a fighter may be shaking off ring rust. Now, this is not exclusive to the PBC or PBC fighters, but it is a common theme among them, more so than other fighters that are with other stables under banners. Under other banners. A fighter that hasn't fought in a while may find that their timing is a bit off, their ability to judge the distance as well. It hampers their ability to perform. And you will find that the more you do something, the better you become at it. Well, the less you do something, the harder it becomes to do. Maybe asking yourself, well, if it's a common sense argument, the way that you present it, then why is it that so many of the PBC's fighters fight so infrequently? I mean, I think it's been two years since Gary Russell had a fight. We know it's been a year since Keith Thurman had a fight. Why are these fighters operating under these circumstances more so than everybody else's fighters? And a part of it, at least a part of it. A part of it is budget constraints. In 2022, Fox decided not to renew their deal with the PBC, leaving them only with Showtime as a broadcast partner in 2023. And on the Showtime platform, there were budget cuts, big ones, a scarcity of resources. That scarcity creates a scarcity of fight dates to where you can't keep all these guys as active as they should be. So that's a part of it. Budget cuts. Definitely made it harder for the PBC to keep their fighters active, though there still was a remedy, a solution. What? If there are not that many fight dates on the PBC and Showtime side of things, perhaps you should broaden your horizons and fight somewhere else for someone else, just to stay active, just to stay busy, because if you wait around waiting for the PBC to get you a fight date, you might be waiting for a while. Inactivity amongst PBC fighters, more so than anybody else's fighters, was a common theme in the previous year and previous years. Errol Spence was coming off a year of inactivity going into the Crawford fight. Fulton was coming off a year of inactivity going into the Inui fight. Jermel Trullo, he was coming off a year of inactivity going into the Canelo fight. And I know that Jermel says that he was injured. That's what kept him out, but I don't actually believe him. I don't believe he was injured. I believe he was trying to circumvent the Tim Zhu fight that he was ordered to have by fabricating an injury, by manufacturing one. In any event, Jermel was coming off a year of inactivity and so was Deontay Wilder going into the Joseph Parker fight. And all these guys got saved. All these guys got beat. Irrespective of the uniqueness in their circumstances, the common denominator is all these fighters were coming off a year of inactivity and all these fighters got beat. Inactivity doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anything. It doesn't help a fighter's ability to perform or a fighter's ability to sell fights and market themselves because how are people supposed to be excited about you and your career when you fight so infrequently? In the previous year, same year all these fighters got beat, we saw an active effort from Joseph Parker to be more active, more active than he was in previous years. We saw an active effort from Anthony Joshua to be more active, to fight not just once, but two, maybe even three times if he could, and he did. And in their last outings, you saw the benefit of that effort. They were a lot sharper, a lot better. In the new year, fighters need to be more active. Fighters need to try harder to get out there and get out there often, two to three times in one calendar year, not just one. And this is not exclusive to the PBC and their fighters. In a very general sense, fighters need to fight more often. Look at Josh Taylor. There's a year in between the Jack Catterall fight and the Tiafimo Lopez fight. That didn't help his situation. Even if inactivity is a more common theme on the PBC side of things 
than anywhere else in a very general sense. All fighters need to be more active. It's just a lot more noticeable with the PBC fighters than someone else's because so many of the PBC's fighters fight so infrequently. And it's not for lack of opportunities, it's for lack of trying. That if there is a scarcity of fight dates on the Showtime side of things, now the Amazon side of things, there are other promotional outfits that are willing to make fights with you. You look at a fighter like Keith Thurman, who has sat out for about a year now, What's stopping him from going to Matchroom and making some kind of an arrangement? What's stopping him? Herrera Slandi Lara, WBA middleweight champion. What's stopping you from going to top rank and making an arrangement that sees you unifying titles with Yanni Beck? You'd rather sit around inactive, not making any money in the hopes that Amazon and the PBC will reschedule your fight with Danny Garcia? That's not even a big fight anyway. When I sit back and I think about all the fights I saw, in the previous year, the patterns and what were the common denominators, one common denominator was inactivity amongst PBC fighters. But even if there were budget cuts on Showtime and there's currently a limited amount of fight dates on Amazon, there's still opportunities out there with other outfits. You just have to expand your horizons. And what I see is a lot of these guys, they don't want to. Or they wait too long to do it. I mean, Wilder did eventually jump ship, jumped in bed with the Saudis, though by the time that he did, he'd sat out for most of the year, over a year. The moral of the story is that fighters need to be more active. They need to do more, to fight more, to be seen more. They need to be more active. You might notice that the sport of boxing in previous eras was at the forefront of the sporting world in the United States. It wasn't a background sport then, the way it is now. No. And fighters in those previous eras fought more often than this era's fighters. I remember it was in 1995, I believe it was, 1995, that Oscar De La Hoya, who was very popular at the time, he fought something like five times in that one calendar year. And he was a lot more popular then than some of the popular fighters are now. Activity has a lot to do with that. The more you're doing something and the more people are seeing you, the more people are talking about you. What needs to change? In this more political era of boxing where there are political boundary lines and exclusivity deals, commitments to broadcasters, broadcast partners, and all that jazz, the fighters need to sit down with their managers and their promoters to work it out to where they're fighting at least two to three times a year, to the minimum. Some instances that might be more difficult to do as some fighters have exclusive deals that come with big contract minimums that make it difficult for the powers to be to get these fighters out there more often and the fighters and their managers none of them want to go backwards on the money but they're shortchanging themselves in the long run because you're never going to hit that superstar status fighting so infrequently and the reason you're fighting so infrequently at least for some guys is because it's so expensive to get them out there those other fighters the ones who perhaps don't have exclusivity deals with a particular promoter or a particular broadcaster should expand their horizons and and field offers from other promotional outfits to fight on other sides of the street. That's what we see Devin Haney doing. He used to fight on Matchroom, then he went to top rank for a bit. Now he's back over at Matchroom. It's for the ones that don't have long-term commitments to a particular broadcaster or a particular network. The ones that do, those guys should sit down with their managers and their promoters to work out a schedule where maybe they fight three times in one calendar year instead of just two. Because I reiterate, when you're fighting so infrequently, you're only going to be talked about but so much. And in the long run, you're shortchanging yourself. You're not going to get but so big fighting on a schedule like that. And the schedule that they mean to keep is not dissimilar from what we saw from Floyd Mayweather towards the tail end of his career, not realizing by that time, Floyd was making vast sums of cash that these fighters are not making right now. If they mean to get there, then they need to fight more often in what are meaningful fights in order to amplify their popularity as boxing in america is not as popular as it used to be now in a global sense on the global stage boxing is more popular than it's ever been we see flourishing markets in the asian market the japanese boxing scene in europe uk boxing and uk boxers are bigger and more popular now than they ever were in previous eras and what about the australian market that's a booming market a developing market so in a global sense Boxing is bigger than it's ever been, but in a domestic sense, here in America, the domestic boxing scene 
It's actually shrinking. It took approximately five years to finally get Terence Crawford in the ring with Errol Spence Jr. And the PBC is largely in part to blame for this. They wanted Errol to do a round robin with every single one of their fighters before they'd even entertain the idea of him fighting Terence Crawford. And in the end, you waited five years to do that fight just so it wouldn't sell a million pay-per-view buys? Because it didn't. What you tried to do was apply the Maypack formula to another fight involving, involving two other fighters that aren't Manny and aren't Floyd. They didn't have Manny's following or Floyd's following. They were nowhere near as popular. Thus, that formula, waiting it out, hoping it'll build. It's got to stop. And what isn't being said is that in the buildup of what eventually became the May Pack fight, the highest grossing boxing match in the history of boxing matches, not only were Floyd and Manny more popular than today's fighters, but they had other popular fighters to keep busy with as well, many of which were also more popular than today's fighters. You don't have the luxury of time, and that's a misapprehension that's become commonplace in the American market. Why did it take so long to put Caleb Plant in the ring with David Benavidez? Well, in Samson Lukowicz's own words, they wanted to wait. They wanted the fight to build and as a result of that when those two guys actually did fight neither of them were champions you had the chance to do it when they were both unbeaten and it would have been a unification match but you waited four what was it four years four you waited four years just to sell next to nothing at the box office for that you should have did it in 2019 what changes need to happen in the new year along with fighters being more active and working harder to be more active in order to become more popular the powers that be themselves they need to stop dragging their feet and they need to make these fights these meaningful fights in a timely fashion. You can't apply the May Pack formula to every single fight. It's not going to work. When they fought, that was a much more fertile market than today's boxing market. Or bipartisanship is needed. What made the Day of Reckoning card towards the tail end of last year such a big show and such a big card is it featured stars and familiar faces from all different sides of the street. Queensbury fighters, matchroom fighters, one or two guys from the PBC, as well as some fighters that are with smaller promotional outfits, all converging for one big show. More bipartisanship is needed in the sport of boxing to deliver bigger, better fights more often. Which is easier said than done. But it still needs to happen. These fighters and their managers that grow comfortable staying on one side of the street, their side of the street, they really do need to expand their horizons and be more open to the idea of fighting under other banners for bigger opportunities. Because just waiting around, it's not helping your situation. Is it helping Keith Thurman? Did it help Gary Russell? Before he lost his belt to Mark McSayo, he was offered a million dollars to unify titles with Josh Warrington, who I think he would have beat and he turned it down. And to do what? what? To be a less active fighter? To have to shake off ring rust? In the Mark McSayo fight? There's a lot that needs to change about the sport in the new year. Fighters need to be more active, and it shouldn't take a year and a day or five to deliver meaningful fights. It needs to happen more often. Now these changes that I'm talking about, I feel some promotional outfits are more capable of implementing these changes than some others. But as it pertains to the PBC, what I think a lot of people aren't realizing is they're operating at a much reduced capacity than they used to, with less resources than they used to have. Before, you had two major broadcast partners in Fox and Showtime giving you an annual budget to do fights throughout the calendar year. And the both of those deals turned out to be squandered opportunities that saw both broadcasters leave the sport of boxing while Al Heyman and his acolytes and his supporters pat themselves on the back for what a great year yeah. last year was with fights like Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence and Ryan Garcia versus Gervonta Davis, Canelo versus Charlo. Well, have you ever heard the phrase too little and too late that you are a day late and a dollar short. When Showtime extended their deal with the PBC in 2018, what turned out to be a five-year deal, lasted five years, it seems like the PBC waited until the fifth and final year to start making fights that move the needle and everybody's patting themselves on the back that so many fights came to us, so many big ones by way of Showtime last year, but what about the four years before it? What they're not understanding is even if last year was a big year for the PBC, well, how big could it have been 
if last year was the year that Showtime left the sport of boxing. After 37 years in the sport and all that history and all that lineage, how big could last year have been for Showtime Boxing if they left? I see there's a lot of Americans who don't want to admit that Al Heyman's business savvy and his business strategy is not sustainable over the long haul. They're highlighting what are personal bests and small successes and grossly overlooking the bigger picture. The bigger picture is now, no. you're in bed with Amazon, but you have a lot less resources. If the rumors are true and they're not even giving you a budget, you've got a lot less to work with than you did before. So I don't even know that the PBC has it in their ability to implement the necessary changes to stimulate the market in America. I look at Matchroom, I look at Top Rank, I look at Golden Boy, and I see some established names, but I also see young fighters, up and coming fighters, where I don't see that at the PBC. I just see a lot of guys in their mid 30s sitting on the shelf waiting for a phone call. You say they have Terrence Crawford, but Terrence Crawford's in his mid 30s. They've got him, but for how long? You say they have Canelo, but that's a limited arrangement. That's a limited engagement. They've got him, they've got him for now, but for how long? And you say they've got Gervonta, but Gervonta, he doesn't have two and three and four other Ryan Garcias he can sell a million pay-per-view buys with. So even if they have him, what do they really have? We're in January now, and there are already several cards that have been announced by way of Top Rank, by way of Golden Boy, and I think at least one Matchroom show. But what you will notice is the PBC doesn't have a show this month, and I don't think they have a show coming up next month either. Rumor has it they want to kick off this Amazon deal all the way out there in March, two months from now, really three. Do you remember what I told you last year, that fighters are gonna start to float away? Mark McSayo, Jarrett Hurd, former champions that used to box under the PBC banner, very recently fought on small hall shows. And Luis Neri, a former champion who used to be with the PBC, his last fight was over there on Golden Boy. His next fight might be under the top rank banner. And what about Vito Melnicki? An up-and-comer who used to box on PBC shows, he was in action this weekend on a small hall show. I can go on about the number of fighters that have already started to float away, away from PBC Island, and are popping up on other sides of the street due to the PBC's inability to keep them active, to keep them busy. I don't actually know that the PBC can implement the necessary changes. Other promotional outfits can in America and outside of it, but as it pertains to the PBC. They have a lot less to work with than they used to. A lot less fighters and a lot less fight dates. What you're looking at is 12 to 14 fight dates to accommodate 150 fighters or over 150 fighters. And don't forget that at least six of those fight dates are gonna be pay-per-views, six to seven, maybe more. They recently dusted off two 40-year-olds and Robert Guerrero and Andre Berto. That's not a good sign. I mean, what would people say if Top Rank was still staging fights between Ray Beltran and Ricky Burns? Just telling you, what changes need to happen in the new year to stimulate the sport of boxing, particularly in America, what changes need to happen and who can actually implement those changes? See if the PBC can dig themselves out of this hole.